What in the world is MapReduce? Hey everyone, Garth Schulte from CBT Nuggets. In this micro nugget, we're going to talk about MapReduce, the programmable framework for accessing distributed data. Let's get to it. MapReduce has actually been around for a while. Google built this proprietary technology back in the day to pull data off of their Google file system, which was their own proprietary distributed file system. So it's what they used to store the internet. They stored the internet in the Google file system. They made it searchable and, and mined those, those web pages using MapReduce. Well, that was a while ago. And since then, they genericized it. They published the white papers. And now the most popular uh, implementation of MapReduce is the open source Apache Hadoop project. Hadoop is really just two core technologies. It's HDFS, the Hadoop distributed file system. It's how we can take data and spread it across a cluster of machines. And then MapReduce is what we're going to use to pull the data off of that cluster of machines. So MapReduce is simply just our programming framework for processing distributed data. You know, I should probably have the word parallel in here somewhere as well, because when we're talking about Hadoop, we're talking about big data, terabytes and petabytes of data spread across our cluster of machines. So what that means is when we submit a MapReduce job to the cluster, we want to harness the power of all of these machines. We want all these machines to work together to process and serve up that data. And that's the real magic behind Hadoop and MapReduce is that when we submit a MapReduce job to a cluster of machines, that code gets distributed and executed locally on each machine. So we're not distributing data across the network, we're simply distributing code across the network so it can work on that data locally. So let's say that we have nine one terabyte files out there. So we've got nine terabytes of files. We throw this into HDFS, which spreads that nine terabytes, spreads those files across all the nodes in our cluster. Now we need to write a MapReduce job to mine this data. And think of writing a MapReduce job a lot like writing a query. The end result is the same, some data we can use in an application or a report or a dashboard. How we get there is just a little bit different. And, and I'll show you at the end of this micro nugget how we can get there, some different tools and technologies we can use to write MapReduce jobs, and, and even some tools that will make it a lot like writing a query. And by the way, the reason it's called a job is because MapReduce is a batch processing framework. We're looking to get big answers out of our big data, and every little piece of data is a part of that answer. Now, there are ways to do real-time analysis and work with specific pieces of data in Hadoop, and that's through a project known as HBase. Anyway, back to our example. So we've got nine terabytes of data that we stored in HDFS, which is sitting on top of thousands of nodes inside of a Hadoop cluster. And let's say that we have billions and billions of animal records sitting inside of this data and sticking with the Hadoop theme. You'll notice a lot of the projects in the Hadoop ecosystem are named after animals or something to do with them. We have pig and hive and zookeeper, so on and so forth. So, so we'll say we're working with animal data. Now, if we were to program against the MapReduce framework directly, then we would need to write the map and the reduce implementation. So it's, it, it, think of it as this phased approach. Mappers are what run on all the data nodes to get the data. So this is what would actually go and get the data. So if we were writing a query to say, get all the animals by type, we want to know how many animals we have in our nine terabytes of data broken out by type so we can get counts of them. Well, we would write the mapper to specify, you know, go get the animal type out of this data. The shuffle and sort phase happens in the background. It basically just lines up all the data that makes it easy for the reducers to aggregate that information. So here, the reducer then would be responsible for just getting us uh, the aggregated results. So mappers just go and get the data points. Reducers aggregate all of those data points and pipe it out to a file or multiple files that we can then consume from a front end or from a report or application or dashboard. So how do we build these MapReduce jobs? One way is to program directly against the MapReduce framework using Java. So we would write the implementation for our mappers and our reducers, compile it into a jar file, and that is what we would submit to our cluster. Another way to do it is using a utility that comes with Hadoop called Hadoop Streaming. This is a utility that allows us to shell out our mappers and our reducers. So you can essentially build it in your programming language of choice as long as it runs on Linux. We could do Perl and, and uh, Python and Ruby. And if you really wanted to go the extra mile, you could install Mono and use you know things like C Sharp. So that just allows us to shell out our mappers and reducers. But what if you're not a programmer? Or you just want something that has a short development time that's simple and familiar so we can ad hoc pull data out of our cluster. Well, thankfully, we've got a couple of popular abstractions that sit on top of MapReduce. One's called Pig, the other Hive. But what if you're not a programmer? Or you just want something with a short development time that's 
familiar and comfortable and you can ad hoc pull data out of your Hadoop cluster. Thankfully, we have two extremely popular Hadoop projects, one called Pig, one called Hive. These are just abstractions that sit on top of MapReduce. If you were to create a, a Pig or a Hive script, it would underneath the hood spin up a MapReduce job. So Pig is a data flow scripting language. Its, it's language is called Pig Latin. And if you're comfortable with ETL and creating data flows, then Pig Latin is the language for you because you're gonna create a data flow, you're gonna transform that data until you get to your result. Hive is what a lot of data professionals gravitate to because it's essentially SQL for Hadoop. Its language is called HiveQL, it's a dialect of SQL, and if you've written any SQL statements at all, then you'll feel right at home with Hive. So whether you use it directly or indirectly, MapReduce is at the center of data processing in Hadoop. In the CBT Micro Nugget, we answered the question, what is MapReduce? We saw that it is our programming framework for parallel batch processing distributed data stored in HDFS inside of a Hadoop cluster. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.